Good morning. Good to see you jumping on today. Go ahead, take a few moments and say hello. Let us know where you're watching from today. Hello. And hello to you. <laughs> good morning. Good morning so far. And uh, we're excited to jump into the Word today. So good, so good, good seeing you all jump on today. To take a few moments and like and share the broadcast. We're excited yeah. to see people get the word out. Good morning. Andy is in the house. Good to see you, my friend. It's so nice on these Wednesdays. Don't you all, don't you wish, Champ Fam, Champ Fam if I could talk, that we could start every what? Wednesday, every day like yeah. this. Just have another, another <laughs> He's like, more caffeine. More wake caffeine. up. Wake up. Mm. I'm actually awake. That's good. That's but good. I just can't talk. So that's good. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, don't you wish we could start every morning with our champ? Band? Yes, y'all are amazing. We love you, Tammy. Good to see you jumping on today, praying for you and the family. Yes. And what God is doing, and just believing God is a God who works all things together for our good. Amen. In every situation, we trust. We believe He's working. And he's going to work it all for your good, That's no matter right. who you are today. Chuck Logan, good morning to you and your amazing family. Good morning, Don Snyder, checking Dawn in. Don is in the house. What a good guy. Aww, Appreciate you, Thank Dawn. you, Courtney. <laughs> it's good so stuff. Sweet. Jared West is in the house. Good to see you, Jared. And... So many CLA students and instructors are jumping on this morning. We have yeah. CLA tonight. If you don't know about CLA, it's our Champion Leadership Academy. We're actually opening for registration. I think we're open for registration, mm -hmm. and it is just amazing. It um, is. So good. I've been in the middle of teaching uh, courses, and they're just so good. I'm excited for tonight. I am too. Yeah. So, hey, if you've been praying about growing in a in your in a deeper knowledge of God's word you just want to be more equipped with what with what <laughs> you can't talk either <laughs> with God's it's word it's so funny cuz the message today is the power of confession and we just need to get our tongues what working is going our mouth. On? <laughs> so it's going to work out though so but if you've been praying about going deeper this is such a great opportunity uh, for growth yeah. in your life encountering God's word so good our son in is in CLA and yep. he loves it he um you know, he's doing it to grow more in the word and so good. Yeah. Good morning to you, Ballerina Shoes. Good Courtney's to have you been on. enjoying our Foundations of Ministry yes. class. It has been so amazing. So yes. good. Yes. So Lisa Barzan is in the house. Hey, I do want to take a few moments and celebrate this amazing woman because <laughs> it's her birthday week. Yeah. Friday. This Friday. 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 It's good when you have your birthday on a Friday. It is. It's exciting. I mean, it's it's, it's good it's that like you have your birthday no matter what. <laughs> but when it's on a Friday, you know, it just kind of feels like. So good. Something. Another year, celebration of life and yes. health and all good things, things ahead. good. Good things ahead. So um, we're going to jump into the word today. And Melissa Six, everybody's saying happy birthday now. <laughs> Thank you all. Christy, great to see you on today. All of you jumping on. And if you haven't shared the broadcast, do us a favor. Go ahead, do that. Emily, thanks for jumping on. All the birthday wishes are going out now. I know. It's so sweet. crazy. So sweet. I appreciate so, it. Well, let's talk about the power of confession. This is an area that really is so important. Matter of fact, I think it can be overlooked because a lot of times in our lives, we can just say what we feel. Um, we can say what we see. And so these are actually pitfalls, though, when you start to understand the power of your confession, um, because we all fall into that trap. Yeah. You know, um, we all fall into saying what we see or saying what we feel in the moment and feeling our emotions. And, and while it's not bad to process, it's actually a healthy thing to process emotions and our different feelings, and that's part of our humanness, it's important that we don't establish the wrong confession as we process these things. And Again, these are pitfalls. Yeah. Um, these are things that can actually derail you. Um, they can actually set you back. They can actually begin to hurt 
what God wants to do in your life. And so the, the first key to the power of a good confession is that understand that confession begins with what you consume. Mm-hmm. Because here's the thing. It's not a matter of me just trying to will my way through this or um, adapt my mind in such a way where it's about me trying to empower myself. It's more about what you're consuming it, that determines what you're going to confess. Yeah. And so um, let's take a look at, um, let's go to Math, or Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6 and verse 45. Luke 6, 45. Throw it up. Put it up in the comments. And put, confession begins with what you consume. Confession begins with what you consume. Go ahead, throw that up. Thanks for throwing that up, Christy. Begins with what you consume. Barb's throwing that up too. Matthew 6. Um, let's actually start in verse 43. Luke 6. Luke 6, 43. Why don't you read your version, if you would, please? Yeah. Thank you. It says, For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor does it a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor are grapes picked from bramble bushes. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Mm. So good. Break it down. Break it down. What are we seeing here in this passage that really is going to help us build from the right foundation? Because the foundation of your heart is is everything. And let's let's be reminded, Jesus said, the human heart apart from God is evil. Yeah. It has evil intentions. It doesn't think the right things. It Apart from Christ, that's why I'm so grateful when we are born again, we, we receive the spirit of the living God. We receive that new heart that is soft and that is moldable and shapeable to the work of God. But let's talk about that because what Jesus is showing us is that we're actually, he said, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth is speaking. Yeah. And the importance of that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's it's what you're consuming in that that um, what we consume makes up our belief system, and so whatever you believe is going to come out. Mm-hmm. Um, you've heard the the saying that you know when you bump a cup of coffee, what spills out of it? Coffee, and oftentimes our words are a great litmus test for where our believing is in the moment. You might be. Um, a spirit-filled believer, but you catch yourself saying things that are contrary to scripture. Maybe it's complaining or negativity. And that's a great moment to stop and say, wait a second, why why is this my natural response? Um, Are there things that I've been consuming? Have I been in the word enough? Or am I just consuming what the world is telling me, what my situation is telling me uh, in that moment? And, um, you know, any of us can fall prey to it. I I can sit in a a dentist office for 30 minutes waiting for my kids and watch the news, which I don't normally consume. And I notice when I go out, like my thinking is different a little bit. And I have to to on purpose Mm. start to... um, cast down those thoughts and renew my mind like we talked about last week on the broadcast Romans 12 2 yeah. so that now I'm putting the right things in so that when um, when my heart is tested the right things come out in yeah. those moments and I love that word because it, you know he mentions what is stored what is deposited mm-hmm. you know you're going to speak what is deposited one of the uh, interesting statistics we gave from the Bible Society that did this, uh, test, uh, I guess it was a survey, and uh, it talked about how those that had the Word of God, that would read the Word of God or listen to the Word of God, like you're all are doing right now, a minimum of four days out of the week, actually saw what, what we would define as supernatural results. So they were, uh, the, the actual, those who would fall into sin, the levels or the percentages were so much lower Um, And then on the flip side, the good that was coming out of their life, Mm -hmm. like witnessing to Christ, witnessing Christ to others, you know, discipling people, sharing their faith, all of these things were like off the scales, off the charts as far as those who were doing those things. And when you look at it, it's not by accident. It's not, these aren't things we don't know, 
But these are things that even when you look at it statistically are proving out to be true. We know God's word to be true. Yeah. I just love when we see it um, in these surveys and these different things that we see because what we're seeing is that God's word, when we store it in our heart, it has the ability to transform our hearts so our confession lines up with what God's word is saying. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking about this and meditating on this truth um, the other day. I was thinking how really it's a cycle that we go through. So, you know, what we believe, we speak, and then what we're speaking is going back into us because we're, we're the loudest voice that we hear. That's good. Um, and so what you're speaking out is what's going into your belief system. So really, it's training yourself that even um, if you don't feel it or you're, you feel like, I don't know if I believe that, to start speaking it because as you speak it, you're going to hear it and you're going to ingest it and you're going to digest mm. it and you're going to believe it more and then you're going to speak mm. it. And so really, it's a cycle that our confession and our belief system work together um, to build up our faith. And so it's so not good. one without the other. It's they're working together to feed our faith. Yeah, and understanding that you know, th this is really the next point, is confession is how God formed and created the universe. You know, it talks about it in Hebrews that he spoke and the world began to exist. The Spirit of God hovered over the dark, the deep of the waters, and when God spoke, let there be light. That's what manifested in the world. Yeah. And so you have to see if we're created in the image and likeness of God, then it's something that if we're created that way, and we are, that when we begin to speak, we create the world yeah. around us by our words, by our confession, we're creating. That means if you're a negative person, you're always just speaking negative, or you're always just saying what you feel, um, you're letting your emotions lead you, or you're letting what you see lead you. When, you're, when you begin to speak that, you're only feeding in the wrong direction. Yeah. You're only going to feed what is um, something that actually is not going to produce life in you. And, uh, you know, we find that in Numbers chapter uh, 14, a powerful portion of Scripture, if you have your Bibles, powerful portion of Scripture in Numbers chapter 14. And uh, let's take a look at verse 28. This is God speaking to Moses. And uh matter of fact, rewind it, says... Verse 27, God says, How long must I put up with this wicked community and it's complaining about me? Yes, I've heard the complaints of Israel and what they're making against me. So what was interesting is when they were complaining about the situation, God took offense to it and said, You're actually, your complaining is not about the situation you're in. It's actually directed at me. It's good. Because ultimately they didn't trust him. So that's so powerful to think about that when I'm complaining, it's not about necessarily the situation. Ultimately, I'm complaining because there's a lack of faith or trust in God in that area of my life. Yeah, it's doubt on display, really. And it's we've good. all heard like it, that. you know, when you complain, you remain where you're at. Mm. And and um, you know, God was so patient with them in the book of Numbers, truly. Mm -hmm. um, they were complaining. All that God had done miraculous things. Think about mm -hmm. that. He had um, gotten them out mm -hmm. of Egypt, and we, they crossed the Red Sea. They saw Pharaoh and all of his army completely consumed by the waters. Mm -hmm. And yet, as soon as they started to um, walk through the desert, they started to complain about things that they didn't see mm -hmm. happening to their likeness, uh, to what they wanted, to their standard. And and they had forgotten about all of the glorious things God had just done. And how how quickly we can do that with our words and our confession is to really start to speak doubt and disregard the miracles that God had done and has done in your life. So good. So good. I love that. It goes on and he goes and he says this, Now tell the people of Israel this, As surely as I live declares the Lord, listen to what he says, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. <laughs> <laughs> so he was saying, you created the future you're going to live in by the words you continually spoke. You know, the Bible says this in Job, that we sh should decree a thing and it will be established. So it's by the power of our, our words in 
a heart that's rooted in faith that actually produces the life that we want. And he says, I will do the very things I heard you say. And then he goes on, you will all drop dead in the wilderness because you complained against me. And every one of you who is 20 years of age or older was included in the, who is re- included in the registration will die. You will not enter and occupy the land I swore to give you. The only exceptions to the rule will be Caleb and Joshua. Wow. And it's because they had a different spirit yeah. and a different confession. We can surely take the land even when I see there's obstacles. And uh, and so watching our hearts, watching our confession, when we feel this moment of complaining, it's going back to the word that renews our minds so that in our hearts, doubt doesn't get in. Yeah, that's so good. You know, Mark eleven twenty three. it says this. It's talking about when Jesus cursed the fig tree. And Jesus um, answered them, have faith in God. In verse 23, it says, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he said will come to pass, it will be done for them. And he goes on to say, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And so, you know, Mm -hmm. he's talking about the power of the connection between our mouth and our heart, our believing system and what we're saying. And, uh, you know, it's like, it's like the power company, you know, um, if, if you're going over to your to your light and you're flipping it on and nothing's happening, mm. um, you know, it's it's a power issue. Mm-hmm. And so understanding that the power comes in the believing and not doubting and mm. then speaking it forth. You can if you don't truly believe what you're saying in in a way that it's true to who you know God to be, there's not going to be a power mm. connection to it. That's good. But whenever you believe, that's why Jesus didn't have any doubt in him. That's when he spoke, his words carried power to yes. to change things. Yeah. And so there has to be that connection between an integrity between what we believe mm. and what we're saying. Mm. And so, you know, watch it on both ways. If you believe that that God is a healer, that through Jesus Christ you mm. can receive healing, uh, and that's what you believe in your heart, but then because of your symptoms or your circumstances or the doctor's reports, you're speaking in alignment contrary to your belief. You're negating your faith and the power that God has given you to overcome. And so, you know, making sure that there's a continuity mm-hmm. between our believer and our speaker, uh, that, that what we believe right. in our heart is uh, continuous with what we're, we're speaking out. And so um, really learning to speak faith, contrary to circumstances, contrary to situations, contrary to doctor's reports, uh, the mm-hmm. things around us. And, and as you start to do that, even if it's just by a little bit of faith, you're like, you know, I'm choosing to believe mm-hmm. Uh, what God's word says over the report of the natural, and you're speaking that out, that there's more power in that uh, than in your complaining and just feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah, that's so good. And I love what you said about being integral. You know, that word even uh, congruent, just being congruent, that it's defined as in being in agreement or harmony. So it's, it's something where you are fully engaged in what you believe. So it's, you know, it's not James 1 talks about the man who is double-minded is like a man who's tossed about by the waves. So he's not congruent. He's not integral. And so because there is a lack of harmony and unity within of what he's thinking, what he's processing, he's saying that man is double-minded and, and he won't receive anything. It's impossible yeah. when you're not congruent or integral to actually receive it. If you're not in harmony with the word and what you believe and you say, oh, I believe this, but then you go speak another thing, it's showing that you're divided in how you believe or or you're still wrestling through. And that's the moment where you've got to go back and re-engage the word. Yeah. This, is, this is such an important key because w- your speaking or your complaining is a sign that you lack the word in your life in such a way that it hasn't produced enough faith 
to where you speak. Yeah, you're not fully convinced, the Bible says. There's not a fully convincing to your faith. That's why, um, you know, when you're teaching faith, when I teach the faith class, we talk about Mm -hmm. how you have to learn to be very decisive in life, that Mm -hmm. you have to learn to say what you mean Mm -hmm. in every area. And it does affect um, every area of your life. You know, Mm -hmm. if someone's asking you, you know, how's your day? Oh, you know. Yeah. It could be better or, yeah. you know, just live in the dream or whatever. No, learn to be decisive about yeah. what you believe all of the time. That's what that congruency and that integrity between our belief system, who we are mm-hmm. and what we're saying, where the power so, is connected to it. And so mm-hmm. learn to be decisive. Don't be wishy-washy. Don't be saying whatever the world is saying. No, you say and you speak what you believe. And if you're not feeling it, Get into the word of God. Yes. If you're not feeling it in the moment, there's going to be days. Let me just tell you, there's going to be days Mm -hmm. where you'd wake up and you're like, I'm not feeling it today. Well, you might not be feeling it, but your emotions, even though you have them, they're not meant to lead you. So you, what do you do in that moment? You get into the word and you speak the word. Yes. Amen. That's so good. And really that's what Caleb did. He saw the same giants. It wasn't he was it wasn't like he wasn't exposed to the same things. He saw it, he felt it, he, he saw giants, he saw all the things they saw. He just chose to, to speak the word over what he felt or what he saw. Yeah. And what was interesting is, and this is a point that you were you were beginning to, to bring out, is sometimes we think that by complaining or being negative, it's gonna help us feel better. But the fruit we the Bible says in Proverbs 18. We will eat the fruit of our words. We will have the harvest of what we're speaking. We'll be filled with that. So our humanness says, well, it's okay to complain. It's okay to speak negative. And and we're thinking that by doing that, we're actually getting it off our chest. Oh, I'm so glad I complained about this. If I complain about it or if I just say what I want to say, then I'm going to feel better. But in actually in Numbers chapter 13, listen to, listen to what it says here. It says, the other people who explored the land said, we cannot go up. So they're reinforcing the negative word. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report across the land. And um, it, it goes on and says, we will be devoured. Listen to what happens next. Chapter 14, verse 1. The whole community began weeping aloud, and they cried all night. Their voices rose in great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. Oh, if we'd only died in Egypt, our best days are behind Mm -hmm. us. This is a powerful moment because we can all do this to where we reinforce the negative word, and we think that by doing it that we're actually going to come to some kind of like peaceful state when it actually produces more chaos, more confusion. And the Bible says they just begin to weep. They were depressed then. Why? Because when you speak words of doubt and unbelief and you're complaining, it's going to, the harvest that comes back, you think it's like this self-pity state that's going to help you feel better about yourself, but it actually attracts back to you you know, depressing negative thoughts because you're sending out the wrong word. It's coming back and delivering you negative feelings, negative emotions, depressing thoughts, and they weeped and they they continued to feel discouraged because they were sending out the wrong word. Yeah. And the question to you today is this, to me today is this, what word are you sending out? What word are you sending out? God said, when I send out my word, it it brings back that which I spoke. It's the same way. We're created in the image of God. When you send out your word today, what's going to come back to you is going to be the harvest of what you've been speaking. That's right. And I love uh, the the scripture that you quoted in the book of Job. Um, Decree a thing and it will be established before you. And it goes on to say, if you read on in that scripture, it says, and then the, the light of my favor will be upon you. Mm -hmm. One version says uh, upon the path that you take. So when you're speaking and decreeing God's word, now his favor and his grace is upon that thing and you're seeing him make a way where there is no way. If you're speaking and complaining, um, if you're speaking in unbelief and, and you're like, God, why aren't you changing this situation? It's because your words have put restrictions on how much God can do in that situation. When you're speaking in alignment with what God's word says and you're, you're 
speaking into life who he is, now his grace can come and work with it. In fact, there's a, there's a scripture, I think it's in the book of Psalms, that talks about when we speak something, now his angels are going to work to make it happen. When our word goes forth, his angels are now have something to work with in our lives. Yeah. When we're speaking in doubt and unbelief and we're speaking in negativity, God's like, I have nothing to work with here. Mm. Um, I can't do anything. You're actually, so good. your lack of faith, your doubt and your unbelief are actually putting restrictions on the power of God being released mm. to actually change yeah. your situation. Um, I love what Stephen Furtick uh, said one time. He said, whatever you're saying, tag on the line and that's just the way mm. I like it at the end of your sentence. Uh, it's a good way to, to measure if you're speaking in faith or if you're speaking in doubt. Like, um, my finances are never going to change, and that's just the way mm. I like it. Or I'm never going to get healthy, and that's just the way I like so it. Good. Because truly, mm. according to God's word, that's what you're doing. You're that's either so putting an amen on God's plan or you're putting an amen mm. on the enemy's plan for your life. That'll preach, girl. Yeah. I'm preaching. I'm <laughs> preaching good. Proverbs 18, and this is a lot of what, what, what you were just kind of speaking from. It says this, Proverbs 18, let's go actually to verse 20. It says, wise words satisfy like a good meal. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the word. That's good. And the word is wisdom. The right words will bring satisfaction. It goes on. The tongue, the power of life is in the tongue. It can bring death or life. Those who love it, love to talk, will reap the consequences. So what you're speaking, he's saying, is going to, you're speaking either life into your situation today or you're speaking death. The man who, and then he goes on and he talks about, um, he kind of changes the subject. But, but I want you to see here that the power of life and death is in the tongue. And uh, I want to read to you out of the Amplified, and this is what the Amplified says. It says this. Pulling it up. <laughs> Promise. Some background music. Da, yeah. da, da, da. Proverbs 18. This is a powerful version. It says, a man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, what he is speaking. He will be satisfied with the consequence of his words. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love how that reads. And then he goes on, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. He's saying, your words have consequences. Yeah. Wow. And that's why Jesus said, for every word you speak, there's judgment. There yeah. will be, you will be judged. Yeah. Because we're created to be life givers. We're created in our creator's likeness. And when he spoke, it created life. When we speak, we're to create life. We're to change situations. We're to speak to the things that are not as though they already are. And that is, the, that is faith. That's how God created the world. God spoke in faith, and that's what created the world. We're to speak life and will have the consequences of speaking life, yeah. which is good things that fill our life. Yeah, I mean, if you go to the book of James, James talks about the power of our tongue, and it talks about our tongue being like a rudder of a ship. It says in James 3, it says, Not many of you should become teachers, for you know that you who teach will be uh, judged more strict. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect mm. man, able to bridle his whole body. He says, If we put bits into the mouths of horses and they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at ships also. They are also large and driven by strong winds, but are guided by a very small rudder, whatever the will of the pirate directs. So the tongue is small member, but it boasts of great things. And so he's telling us there that truly, mm -hmm. I want you to get this because this could be a, a huge answer to your prayers. Mm -hmm. This could be like a key to victory in your life. 
Uh, he's saying it it matters what you are speaking. Are you hearing me, champions? That's it good. matters what you are speaking. Your tongue can actually derail right. your whole faith. Amen. Your tongue can actually derail the plan of God uh, in your life. Mm-hmm. That the promises of God are conditional. It's mm-hmm. if you do what I say, right. you'll have what I tell you you can yes. have. And James is reminding mm-hmm. us, look, watch your words. Mm-hmm. It matters. It mm-hmm. matters. It's so good. And isn't it interesting that, you know, that that God, when he filled the people, his people, in Acts chapter 2 with the Spirit, they spoke in new language. They spoke in other tongues. And, you know, we see that throughout the Word of God. We see that when the Holy Spirit filled the believer and uh, with the baptism of the Spirit, that the evidence or the outward evidence were new tongues. So I'll say it like this, when you feel negativity coming on you, instead of speaking negative, instead of complaining, speak in your heavenly language. Yeah. Speak in that heavenly language. You have a for, the force of God praying in you and through you when you feel this negativity, begin to pray in that heavenly language, and that heavenly language, as you pray in the Spirit, is going to produce supernatural results and so you might not know how to pray. We talked about getting in the Word. That's going to yeah. help you produce the right confession. But praying in the Spirit will help you to build your faith and build your trust in God. So here's what I would say to you mm-hmm. today. You know, not only find the area that you're lacking faith in, find the area where you need breakthrough. You know, if it's in your finances today, start confessing the Word in the area of your finances. Because think about this. It's not enough just to try to keep pushing out doubt. Like, oh, I, a doubt's hitting me. Let's just take finances. I'm never going to prosper, never going to be promoted, never going to see God bless me, give me success in what I'm doing. And so what we're doing is we're just kind of trying to push out the doubt. We're trying to push it away, but then it comes back. Hmm. You have to take the offensive where you say, all right, this doubt is really attacking my faith for finances. So I'm going to go to God's word. And instead of just trying to push it out, push it out, and just survive, I'm going to go on the offense. Yeah. Some, some of you need to go on the offense today. Start declaring, That's hallelujah, that, that Jesus Christ, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, that he became poor so that I could walk in, his, in riches in the area of my finances so that I could walk in abundance in that area so I wouldn't have to lack and walk in poverty. He's going to cause me and my life to be blessed and prosperous because he paid for it on the cross. So what I'm doing is I'm taking it. I'm not just trying to put it at bay. Maybe you're dealing with anxiety or worry. Whatever the area that's attacking you, maybe you don't feel like you're going to possess your promised land. Hey, go to Numbers 13. Start saying what Caleb said. No, surely we'll possess this land. God's with us today. Start going on the offensive instead of just trying to you know, oh, I, I, that's a doubt. I don't know what to do with it. No, go on the offense and start speaking the word of God. It's a sword of the spirit Amen. is the word of God. When you start speaking the word in the spirit, you're attacking the very things that are attacking you today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, open up your mouth. That's the problem. You're not opening up your mouth and you're not speaking a word against what is being sent against you. That's so good. That's so good. Praise God. You know, I love what you said because a lot of times we might uh, get to the place where we're not speaking unbelief or negativity, but we're not saying anything. Mm. And that's not that's not okay either. You need to open up your Speak. mouth and let the redeemed of the Lord say mm. so. You need speaking forth what God's word says because that's, that's the establishment of it. It's building your faith. It's establishing in faith. It's calling forth. Your words are like so a good. magnet yes. drawing to you that which you're confessing mm. and believing. And that's so, great. you know, I love the power of our words. Um, I love even the simplicity of how it's even the basis of our salvation, that mm-hmm. Romans says that we, we well, if you want to accept Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. if you want to be born again, mm-hmm. as the Bible uh, talks about, it says, believe in your heart mm-hmm. and confess with your mouth. Uh, think about that. If believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth, he doesn't say, believe in your heart and um, you know say a quiet prayer in your head. He mm-hmm. said, no, let it come out of your mouth come because on. there's an establishment that happens. Mm-hmm. If faith can work in salvation, 
where you're going from being spiritually dead mm -hmm. to having a whole new life mm -hmm. in Christ. What a great example of that. If you've been saved and if you've, mm -hmm. if you've experienced that life change, let that be an encouragement to you that there's power in yes. your confession. Amen. There's a power in your confession. And, uh, you know, when we look at the Word of God, Jesus was showing his disciples even, you know, leading up in Mark, Mark chapter 11. The, the Bible talks about even in the previous verses yeah. where Jesus curses a fig tree and after he curses it, what he released from his mouth, the very next day, in 24 hours, things changed. Come on. I wonder if somebody would open up your mouth that in 24 hours, your life looks different. Hallelujah. In 24 hours, things begin to turn around. Send your word forth. Like Isaiah 55 says it. God said, I sent forth my word, and it accomplished everything that it was sent to do. It didn't come back empty. It came back full of what it was sent to accomplish. Yes. Send forth the word today. Send forth the word in your life today. Send forth the word of divine health. Send it forth in your life. Send forth the word of divine peace. Come on, that's your portion today. Send forth the word that joy is your strength today. Send forth the word that God's prospering you in everything you put your hand Hallelujah. to do. And it's not going to stop. No. You know, even if it looks like it's dead right now, hallelujah, God's a miracle working God. There's resurrection power living on the inside of you today. Your situation, my situation is turning around and it's working for my good today in yeah, Jesus' name. So good. I love that scripture when Jesus cursed the fig tree because he cursed it because it wasn't producing. Mm. And really that's the, the area yeah. of frustration in our lives, the pivotal moment of when we want to use our confession either for the right things or the wrong things mm -hmm. is when we're frustrated and we feel like things aren't producing. Mm -hmm. And it's that point that we can either uh, speak in alignment with it, like, oh, it's just never going to produce, or we can speak to it. And Jesus tells us, like, mm -hmm. if it's not producing, like, there's power in your words to speak production into your life. And that's you know, over your finances. That's so over your health. That's over so your good. ministry. That's And so, so start to speak that mm -hmm. production out of your mouth. Start to command things in your life with the power, power of your confession mm -hmm. to start to break through. I love that. Come on. You know, just that production. Mm -hmm. I get frustrated Come when on. things aren't producing. I remember Amen. we had chickens and they weren't producing. Mm -hmm. And one day I got story. so upset and I went out to the chicken hen and I said, produce in Jesus' yeah. name. And then very next day there were eggs. Yeah. And, and so I was like, wow, like there's power in that command. Yeah. That's so good. You even do that with our dogs sometimes. <laughs> you bring them over. You're like, listen, this is what's going to happen. You're not going to go to the bathroom in our house. I do. Yeah. I start to command them. And, and <laughs> it's worked. So, so uh, you know, today in your life, what is it? I love that. I, I, matter of fact, that's that's what we're going to pray into. Because, that you know, think about that. This is what Jesus said would be our portion in John 15, that you would bear much fruit mm -hmm. to prove that you're my disciples. And so we're not going to be fruitless. We're going to be productive in everything that God's called us to do. And... We, in Jesus' name right now, we curse anything that has been sent against us. We curse the plan of the enemy. We curse the things that, that should be operating. Whatever needs to be cursed, we curse. And whatever needs to be blessed, in Jesus' name, we bless right. it. That things are beginning to open up for you. Things are beginning to prosper in your life. Uh, and uh, that God is going to begin to turn things around. And as he turns things around, for your good today, you're going to give him all the glory and all the praise yeah. and all the honor. And so, you know, don't see your situation right now as hopeless. See it as a story that's going to be full of God's glory and his grace. And he's just going to get more glory out of the situation. It's just making for a great turnaround story in your life. So get ready for your best days. Get ready uh, for much fruit to come forth from your life in Jesus' name. Yeah, don't get stuck feeling frustrated, mm -hmm. feeling like things are never going to change, hopeless, um, like you don't have any power. You're empowered by the Word of Amen. God, by the, your Spirit of God, and by the will of God. We go back to the Word because the Word of God is the will of God. And we thank you that you will cause us to prosper in everything we put our hands to do. That's what you said in yes. your Word. Hallelujah. We stand on the Word today. We go with the Word today. The word is what we believe today. We speak it forth. We confess it. We thank you that we'll have what we say. 
and we'll see it fill our lives in abundance, and Jesus will receive all the glory and all the honor, and more people will come to Christ as a result. Bless your people today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Well, what a great day to be with you, Champ fam. We love you so much. God's moving in your life. God's working. Open up your mouth today. Speak what you want to see. Speak in the direction you want to go. If you want to know what your future looks like, look at your confession. Because that's the future. That's what the Bible says. So, hey, let the Word of God refine you. Let the Holy Spirit correct you today in some of the things you've been saying. And then speak in the right direction that you want to go in your life. And it's going to be good. So good. So good. Speak in life. Well, we love you today. God bless you. Remember this. God set you up to be a champion in this life. We'll see you real soon. Thank you.